What is going on you guys? It's your girl Diana back at you with another YouTube video. These seven star chestnut raids went live this weekend so today I'll be going over the best way for you to solo these raids in case you don't have a big group to go into them with. And the cool thing about this solo is that one it's not a version exclusive and two it's actually pretty easy. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Why? Why? So today's Pokemon of choice is going to be none other than Lurantis, which makes my heart happy because she's a little pink flower thing that poses as a prey mantis, which look at how cute she is. But Lurantis is a pure grass type and you are gonna want her to have a grass Terra type as well. Item wise, I went ahead and gave her a Shell Bell just to give her a little bit of HP recovery. And EV wise, you're gonna wanna go ahead and of course do the usual and go ahead and max out your HP just so that you can live longer and special attack since she is a special attacker. Chestnut is weaker on the special defense side as well, so it is best to bring special attackers to this raid if you want an easy time soloing it. Other people have soloed with things like Annihilate, which are of course physical attackers, but Chestnut does use iron defense like right off the bat, so it is just going to be a little bit more annoying getting through with those iron defenses if you are using a physical attacker. But the most important thing that you want to remember if you do want to use Lurantis is you're going to want her to have the ability Contrary, which reverses any stat changes affecting a Pokemon that lower its stats which if you look at its moves, we have Leaf Storm on there, which every time you use Leaf Storm, it is going to lower your special attack. But if she has Contrary, instead of lowering the special attack, it's going to raise it instead. So basically a free setup and of course some chip damage until you set up enough in order to do bigger damage. We also have Sunny Day on there, which does come in handy because as you can see, we have Synthesis on there, which is weather-based. So if you have the sun up, you are gonna be able to regain more HP. And it's also helpful for Solar Beam. I went ahead and maxed out the PP for Leaf Storm, but it's probably very likely that I am going to run out of Leaf Storms just due to how many times I'm probably going to have to use it after getting my stats reset. So if I have Sunny Day up, Solar Beam only takes one turn, which means I can just keep spamming it as long as Sunny Day is up. But like I said, this is a pretty straightforward strategy. You're going to want to go ahead and set up Sunny Day, get a couple of Leaf Storms off so that one, you can terrestrialize faster and two, get some chip damage and of course your boosts. Waste a turn while you wait for your stats to get reset by clicking something like synthesis or solar beam, doesn't really matter. Then set up your leaf storms again, and if you run out of PP, you're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure sunny day is still up, and then spam solar beam. But let's go ahead and put it into practice. So like I mentioned, the first thing that Chestnut is going to do in this raid is set up iron defenses. That's why this raid can be a little bit more annoying to do if you do bring a physical attacker, but I'm gonna go ahead and set up sunny day. Stone Age definitely did a little more damage than I would like, but it's fine. We have a shell bell and we always have synthesis if we need. But now that we have Sunny Day up, I'm just gonna go ahead and start setting up with my Leaf Storms. So here's Leaf Storm number one. As you can see, it did nothing, but my special attack was raised because of Contrary. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing and do another Leaf Storm and wait for my lovely special attack boost. And at this point, I should be able to get one more off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and one more special attack boost. So at this point, his shield should be getting put up and we should be getting our stats wiped. So this is gonna be that turn where you don't wanna do anything like set up another leaf blade and waste the PP on that. Just use a move that doesn't really matter. Realistically, you could do synthesis, you could do sunny day if sunny day is not set up or you can do solar beam. I'm gonna go ahead and terrestrialize and just do synthesis since like I said, this is kind of like a wait out turn. So here's my wasted synthesis because I literally am at like almost full HP. Love that for me. And here comes the nullification. So now we're basically back at square one. So I'm gonna go ahead and go for my leaf blades again to set up my special attack boosts. Ooh, I avoided the attack, we love that. And I'm gonna do one more. But as you can see, we have plenty of time on the timer and we have not even gotten close to getting knocked out or anything like that. So we are doing good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one more off just to set myself up for success. And most likely he's gonna wipe stats again. And I wanna preserve my leaf storms. So I'm just gonna go for a solar beam. I've been avoiding attacks left and right in this raid, which is beautiful. Okay, I was right. I knew, I knew it. I knew that was coming. So good thing I did not waste a leaf blade. Oh, I just realized that I probably should have set up Sunny Day because Sunny Day is definitely not up anymore, I don't think. That was a, definitely a bonehead move on my part, but it's fine. We have so much time, I'm literally not concerned. Yeah, no, Sunny Day is no longer up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that this turn so that I can set up for my solar beams later on. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and use my last two Leaf Storms so I can get my boosts. And number two. 
and we are now all out of leaf storms. This should break the shield. Yep, we are all good. So now I'm free to just use solar beam. Let's go ahead and get solar beam number one off and see where that puts us. Okay, that got us into the red. All right, I think one more should hopefully take it out. So let's go ahead and go for another. Oh, of course it lived on like no HP. All right, so one more will get us through this raid, but like I said, I was literally never pressed about the timer. We still have plenty of time on the timer. I was never close to fainting. Oh, they literally finished it off for me. Perfect. And there you have it. One of the easiest raids to solo with an adorable little plant that is masquerading as a bug. And I got an ability capsule. Look at that. The rewards are pretty standard, but you know, you can always farm them. I personally don't like chestnut, but you know me, I always farm for rewards. But there you have it. That is one of the easiest and most accessible ways for you to be able to take down these chestnut raids solo. Like I said, there is plenty of other Pokemon that you can use to solo this raid. It's not a terribly difficult raid, but I wanted to give you something that was easy to access and relatively brainless. But that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. And if you did, I kindly suggest that you consider subscribing so that I can continue to make content for you guys. And if you are already subscribed and you would like another way to support the channel, feel free to check out the merch store. There is a link down below in the description that takes you to not only my merch store, but also all of my other socials so you can keep up with what I'm doing on a daily basis. But thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to those of you who have joined the channel as members. I appreciate you all so much. And thank you to my lovely community because they were actually the ones that showed me this build. But I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.